Hey, in this video, we are continuing on our floral letter alphabet series that we started in 2019 and we only got two letters <laughs> into, but I promise we're gonna be doing a lot more letters of the alphabet in 2020. Starting off with our first floral letter illustration tutorial with the letter C. Did I do this right? Yeah, yeah you actually did. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> um, so if your name is Catherine or Christopher, or you wanna make a card for your cat, then this is the perfect letter tutorial for you. We are going to start with um, printing out a letter or the letter actually as our framework or guide. So I just used printer paper for this thing. Um, and we're gonna dive in. This is going to be with the clematis flower um, for the letter C. So all of our floral illustrations have a specific flower with that same first letter that we used in the illustration for the entire letter C. And if you missed it, we did a letter B um, and a letter A. So check out those illustrations. The letter A has the full tutorial for composition. So if you're at all lost throughout this tutorial, make sure you check out letter A um, because I cover why I place certain flowers in certain spots and then overall composition, etc. But let's get started. All of my discur are <laughs> rewind. <laughs> All of my supplies are linked below. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a couple different an ankles. I was going to say ankles. A couple different angles for a clematis flower. If you want to learn how to watercolor a cl clematis flower, I actually show you a full tutorial in my second book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. Whoa! So if you wanna check it out for watercolor, make sure you purchase that book linked below. But today we're just going to be using black and white illustration to make the letter C with a clematis flower. So to start, I'm using this layout bond paper. Again, all my supplies are linked below. Um, I love layout bond paper, especially for these illustrations because it's semi-transparent. So if I place this letter C as my guide underneath the paper, it's transparent and I can see it um, underneath. So I can follow that shape with my clematis flowers as I'm illustrating. And so my shape doesn't get super wonky or I don't have to sit here for like 20 minutes trying to sketch out the perfect letter C. Um, I can just print one out. This is the font that I use for the C is Futura if you really wanted to get specific. Um, so there's my paper, my pen that I'm gonna be using to show you guys the different um, uh, perspectives of a clematis flower, I'm gonna be using, instead of a pencil, which I normally would be using, um, I'm gonna use my graphic pen from um, Micron Pens. I love Micron Pens for illustration. I normally use a size 01, 03, or 05, but because I want you guys to see really clearly in the video, I'm gonna be using like a really thick size one pen um, instead of a pencil because it wouldn't show up in video. So to get started, I'm going to illustrate a couple different perspectives or um, shapes of a clematis flower on my sheet of paper. Overall though, this flower is a star shape. I talk about all the different types of shapes of flowers within my book, Everyday, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. So if you're like, what are you talking about shapes? Make sure you check out that book. But my star shape flowers um, when you have an overall shape in mind, it becomes so much easier for where to place the petals, how they should be kind of formed and shaped around the center of the flower or the stamen of the flower. So we're gonna start with that overall shape in mind. And then as I'm illustrating, it will start to click and make a lot more sense. So first I'm gonna show you this basically forward facing, looking straight at the center of the flower and it's totally open, a totally open clematis. This is the actual piece of work that I show you in my book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. This is the original. But essentially when broken down, uh, clematis flower is a star-shaped flower, like I mentioned, and they usually have anywhere from six petals or more 
petals around the center of their flower. So a star shape doesn't have to be five points. It can be more than five points, but just overall the shape is star shaped. And so if we come here to the center, we have, you know, angled lines or slant lines that we can draw from one tip of a petal to the other tip of a petal. And so that's how we're gonna start with our basic shape for our flower. I'm going to start with an actual circle here. Normally, again, I would be doing this practice with a pencil, but I want you guys to see this. So if you're just practicing, I highly recommend you take out a light pencil, like an HB pencil or number two pencil to do this as kind of like an exercise. So we can start with literally, again, this would be in pencil, so I'm just gonna do a dotted line. A straight line from top to bottom, straight through that circle, and try and get them around the same size lengthwise. And then another angled line here. So again, this would be in pencil going directly through that circle, and then another angled line. Trying to get these two slant lines around the same angle and height. And since this would be done in pencil, you can erase, like this one is taller than that one. Then from here, our petals are literally going to be S curves plus some C curves. So we did an S curve first and then a C curve second. So that our second half of the petal is the reflection of that. And here is our petal. Okay, so it's kind of like a leaf shape. So we're gonna start with our, I'm gonna make this a little bit taller because this is the tallest petal right now. So I want the two middle petals to be the tallest ones. So starting at that very top, I'm going to pull out an S curve, going about a third or halfway down the line. And then I'm going to hug the bottom of that S curve and pull out a C curve and meet the center. Same thing, S curve, C curve. S curve, C curve, S curve, So clematis are a vine flower. They're this really pretty, they can be a purpley color, a red violet color, um, pink, light peach, etc. So now that I have my six petals, I obviously have this big gap, so I'm gonna do another petal here on horizontally. Sometimes the clematis flower has a lot of petals and they even have ones kind of peeking behind right here. Like that, so we can get really, really dense with our petals to fill it in. And so that's basically the overall shape of the flower for a front place facing flower. And then the circle spot right here is where our stamen is going to go. So the stamen of a clematis flower is this kind of like, uh, I don't know what the word is. An ane what are those sea creatures that when you stick your yeah, finger in them? An anemone or the not flower. Right. A anemone. Sea anemones. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I always switch up the flower anemone and the sea creature, but sea anemones have a similar look with the, I don't know if they're tentacles, 
but the stamen of a clematis flower looks like those feelers on a sea anemone. Feelers is good. Feelers. So the overall shape, I am gonna do pencil because it's gonna get really hard to see if I do this in marker, but the overall shape is basically whatever direction your flower is pointing, the direction of your stamen should be pointing overall. So it's kind of like an egg shape. So if my flower petals were pointing more that direction, my egg would also be pointing that direction. But because it is coming straight on at me and I'm basically looking and I'm basically looking at the top of an egg right here. So if an egg were sitting right here, then um, my stamen is going to be formed around that egg, but then also falling out from the base of that egg. Hopefully that made sense. So we have these stamen shapes, which you're just doing C curves and you can loop down like this to make um, like a little Q-tip to show a fold. And then you just come down um, a little bit up from where you met that first C curve for a folded stamen, or you can just do this kind of, I don't know, long apostrophe look. But to show that fold, you're basically just doing a C curve with a little ball at the top and then showing the base of that stamen. You can go behind other stamens. But here is where my egg would be sitting. So again, if my flower, if my petals were pointing more to the side, then my egg would be off to the side like this and my stamen would be around it like that. Going very quickly. But as you can see now my stamen are kind of forming those curves around an egg that's pointed to the side instead of pointing straight up. So for this, I would have kind of stamen falling around it, but always pointing back to that center spot, that little circle in the middle. So there is one perspective of a clematis flower. Um, you can do obviously more of a bud flower where it's kind of a cone shape. So we would start with, if we wanted a guide using our pencil, we'd start with this bowl shape. And then we would have our middle of our petal here, if this was the top of the petal of the flower. S curve, C curve, S curve, C curve, and then this is the base. And then this would be the middle of our next petal. So we just need one S curve, one C curve, and then same thing over here, one S curve, one C curve. And then we'd have, because it's a bowl shape, we'd have our row of petals behind. So we'd have one peeking through here, one peeking through here, S curve on both sides. So this is these three petals. We're seeing the underneath of the petals. 
so you can see it. We're seeing the underneath of these petals, and then these two, or we can put three or four, are, we're seeing the inside. I am gonna do another one right here. So we're seeing the inside here. And the stamen or the center of the flower would be sitting in here, covered up by these petals here. So then our stem would be right here. And then we could have leaves coming out here. And it's a vine, so our leaves are, I'm trying to make them look a little bit more rough because I like that look for clematis because they're vines. So not perfectly placed or curved, just kind of falling around. So this vine aspect of the clematis flower is going to be really helpful for doing a floral il illustration letter because um, we can kind of shape the overall letter really easily because of the way the leaves and the stems just kind of naturally flow. So we can pull it any sort of direction we want to. So to get started, just practice a couple different shapes of clematis. Overall, if you see the majority of the petals and it's not folded up like this, the overall shape is a star shape. So start with your angles and your straight lines and then your S curves and C curves. And then if you wanna show more of a bud or a closed clematis, then you would follow that bowl shape. So here is your bowl shape here with the opening right there, bowl shape. All right, so now that you're ready and you're practiced, we are going to remove this practice sheet and we are ready to start illustrating our floral letter C. So I'm gonna try and get this centered on my paper and I'm gonna tape this bottom C paper onto my layout bond top sheet of paper so I don't lose where center is. And now we are ready to start illustrating. So again, if you haven't watched the tutorial for letter A, um, make sure you do that. If you're ever at any point in this video wondering why I'm placing a specific flower here or there, um, composition or how I did this or that with the stems, make sure you watch floral letter A. Um, but because we already learned how to draw a few clematis, I'm basically just gonna be using those tips that I gave you for the flowers. And then we're gonna do a hyperlapse or a time-lapse of this video because it does take some time, have patience with it. But the more patience you have, the more it's gonna take shape and it's gonna look like a floral letter C. So it's gonna start off feeling a little wonky probably, but just stick with it. Um, I mainly to get started, I always start with three to four of my main flowers placing those first, and then my leaves and my stems form around that. But again, watch the floral letter A tutorial if you haven't yet. So I'm gonna start probably here, here, and here, and maybe here for my first few letter uh, flowers, and then I'm gonna form the shape of the seat with stems, leaves, and more flowers.
as you can see now, I'm trying to take up space in this dead area or empty area here. You can really accentuate the shape of the letter with these long stems and then just go back in and add leaves to fill in empty areas. But the more stems and leaves you add, the more dense it's gonna feel. So if you don't like a little curve or maybe you made a mistake, just keep adding these stems and leaves and you probably won't even be able to notice it anymore. All right, there you have it, a floral letter C with clematis flower. Um, this is a wonderful exercise, a wonderful exercise in getting to know your overall floral shapes um, and trying to squeeze them in tight corners like the edges of the C, etc. cetera. Um, so it's a great exercise in just trying something new, developing your muscle memory and challenging yourself. So if you get frustrated with the results, just know I've been illustrating these floral uh, letters for like, I used to do it at my desk job before I quit my job and started my business. So I've been doing them for almost nine years probably. Um, so I have a lot of practice under my belt. So just remember it takes practice to be um, quicker at decision-making of where to place the flowers or where to direct the next stem, et cetera. So if you're like, how is she doing it so quick? First of all, it was sped up. Second of all, it takes practice to become quicker at decision-making and not overthinking where you're placing things. So keep practicing. If you need to, step back, just do your star-shaped flower and your cone-shaped flower as practice over and over again, and then that will become easier. That's your step forward in um, illustrating this more quickly, and then also in a more beautiful way if you're really struggling with how yours is looking. So check out floral letter A if you really need some more in-depth tutorial on the actual composition and where I place flowers and why and stems and all of that. Um, but have fun, make sure you have fun. If you haven't tried it yet, this may seem intimidating, but just go for it. There's nothing wrong with crumpling up the paper and throwing it in the trash and trying again. So nobody's grading you. I'm not over there being like, you suck. And I would never do that anyways. So have fun with it. And as I'm assuming you're seeing this trend with our floral letters, we are following the alphabet. So next up will be the floral letter D. Comment below with your favorite D flower. <laughs> um, that's not inappropriate. I don't know why I thought it was. Uh, comment below with your favorite flower that starts with the letter D. Mine is Dahlia, but I don't wanna just like impose that upon you guys and do a Dahlia, but let me know. And we'll, the one with the most votes, we'll do. So comment below with your favorite flower that starts with the letter D. Make sure you like this video and you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss that next floral illustration tutorial for our letter D. And I'll see you in the next video.